is Michael O'Donoghue representing the Postmortem Performing Arts Union, Local 666. We're asking for your support against the brutal and harsh working conditions Mr. Murphy has bestowed upon us here at Saturday Not Live. Mr. Murphy has tried to assassinate my character by falsely claiming that I, Michael O'Donoghue, am a racist. Clearly it is he who insists on besmirching the African American community with inappropriate and offensive humor. I personally have nothing against African Americans. My axe to grind is with the Jews. No, I'm kidding, of course. As it goes without saying, anti-Semitism is the domain of Mr. Murphy, who repeatedly demands that various Jewish cast members, most notably Carl Reiner and Harold Ramis, pay him homage for being their Messiah. But being racist and anti-Semitic isn't enough for Mr. Murphy. He insists on spreading his hate-filled ideas to us, the writers and the cast. John Candy has recently been diagnosed with depression and general anxiety disorder after Mr. Murphy forced him to portray a police officer in blackface and further repeatedly refer to him as Fat Albert. Mr. Murphy is repeatedly sexually harassed in each advance under the guise of his first name being Thomas and her being black. She has repeatedly found on her office door a sign that says Miss Hemmings. Mr. Murphy has sexually harassed Brittany Murphy to such outrageous degrees that she can no longer eat a thing. Lucille Ball had had no, absolutely no problem with being featured on this cast until Mr. Murphy started asking her about what underwear she was wearing as well as exposing his genitals to her under the guise of it being, quote, art. Or she says, Murph art, whatever. Okay, Joan Rivers has alleged that Tom denigrates her and forces her into oral sex. Now, she absolutely loves it, but she still felt the need to report. Now, Jan Hooks is at her wit's end, as Mr. Murphy insists on wanting to motorboat her, which, of course, will be rubbing his mouth into her cleavage, into her breast area, and will not allow her back into a sketch until she performs oral sex upon him, and for some reason constantly references the clay spinner in the movie Ghost while doing so. Speaking of the movie Ghost, Tan has refused to allow Miss Farley and Mr. Swayze to spoof the spinning clay scene in said movie, as he has said Swayze is too, quote, gay to be featured on the show. However, the cast believes that, while of course this is um, completely uncalled for in and of itself, Tom is jealous both of Mr. Swayze's superior looks as well as the affections Miss Farley repeatedly shows Mr. Swayze backstage. And the lovely and talented Gilda Radner, bless her heart, has been diagnosed with post-traumatic stress disorder after she failed to, quote, text back in time to one of Mr. Murphy's frequent and vicious racist and misogynistic diatribes via text that he sent to Miss Radner. Thomas forced Gene Wilder to consider legal action as he constantly berates Wilder and claims he will gain carnal knowledge of Mr. Wilder's wife, Miss Radner. Mary Tyler Moore, Ed Asner, and Ted Kennedy are all considering pressing charges against Mr. Murphy as Thomas allegedly repeatedly attempted to fondle, spank, and grope all three on a constant and consistent basis. He is known to make a penis stroking motion in their presence, singing the tune, You can make it come after all. Dun, 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 dun. He has made the workplace environment for Mr. Pryor, Mr. Mooney, Mr. Mack, and Mr. Cochran racially toxic, as he has repeatedly insisted on casting them as punching bags to our various white privileged former presidents. Plus, he allows Rip Torn in their presence, ever the racist. Moreover, he has allowed Norm MacDonald, when accompanied by his girlfriend, Nicole Brown, to repeatedly ask Mr. Cochran how much he, Cochran, would charge to represent either Mr. Pryor, Mr. Mooney, or Mr. Mack if they were to be charged with murdering Miss Brown. 
We have repeatedly attempted to explain to Mr. McDonald that such humor makes no sense because Ms. Brown is already deceased. Nonetheless, Mr. Murphy allows Mr. McDonald to respond by slurring us with homosexual epithets before continuing to badger Mr. Cochran with hypotheticals involving the murder of his girlfriend, Ms. Brown. Mr. Murphy has overseen a ring of terror regarding ageism among the cast. He denigrates F. Lee Bailey, even once referring to him as a public defender. Jerry Stiller is treated like a Jewish yo-yo, never knowing which, what week Mr. Murphy will allow him on the cast or not. And our understanding is that Jack Warden has been missing for three weeks after asking to speak to Mr. Murphy about more airtime. Tom refuses to use the actual names of some of our performers, including Charlie Redacted, referring to him as Charlie Rocket Man, Redacted, Redacted, referring to him as Larry Sanders, and Bob Redacted, referring to him as Bob Funkhauserstein. He has refused to acknowledge that Bill Hicks is in fact deceased, instead repeatedly claiming that he is actually still alive and is Alex Jones. Tom also refuses to acknowledge that Louis Anderson is in fact a lie. And it takes a, Hercule a Herculean effort every week to not have him listed among the cast. Just today, Mr. Murphy rubbed his genitals on Jessica Walter and said he wanted to, quote, arrest her, quote, development. Luke Perry is in witness protection after Tom tried to hit him with a tire iron after Tom watched the 90210 episode where Dylan kissed Kelly instead of Brenda. Mr. Murphy refuses to put John Cazale in any more sketches until Mr. Cazale agrees to go fishing. Tom, he's already dead. When John Ritter refused to give up Kaylee Kuko's cell phone number to Mr. Murphy, Tom blacklisted him from the cast and continues to extort him regarding Kaylee Kuko until to this very day. Tom repeatedly berates the homosexual tendencies and burgeoning pride that has been blossoming with the brave Don Rickles. We're with you, Don. Mr. Murphy has designated Mr. Pardo to janitorial duties and instead himself attempts to do the voice work. This allegedly is because Mr. Pardo refused to submit to Mr. Murphy's sexual advances. There has been no freedom of political thought in the workplace. Mr. Carlin has been repeatedly harassed and referred to as a commie. And Mr. Carlin routinely finds that his office is bugged and has sent suspicious packages, which Mr. Carlin refuses to open. Tom has further denigrated Mr. Carlin's personal decision to not believe in God by repeatedly locking him in a room with George Burns. Mr. Murphy has simply refused to acknowledge the existence of Greg Geraldo after it was discovered that Mr. Geraldo did better than Mr. Murphy on the LSAT. Anytime a pitch involves a standardized test, Mr. Murphy starts to turn offices asunder and yells that Geraldo is nothing but a, quote, dirty jerk-off pothead. Against the wishes of Philip Seymour Hoffman, Tom insisted on using a drug addiction joke at his expense. Unfortunately, the use of this joke involving Mr. Hoffman caused Robin Williams to relapse. Tom has been sending the cast and crew daily emails, which claim to contain a link to a video where Leslie Nielsen and George Kennedy are jacking each other off. And unfortunately, he's not lying. Rodney Dangerfield has been shown absolutely no respect by Mr. Murphy. Mr. Dangerfield was in tears when Tom insisted Mr. Dangerfield be utilized as his personal footrest. Tom has been known to openly denigrate, criticize, and even shun Phil Hartman over contract disputes. Mr. Murphy has also been spreading misinformation that Troy McClure, Phil Hartman's character on The Simpsons, that his sexual proclivities involving fish in the show were actually in reference to
to Mr. Hartman himself, who I'm told was simply a collector of exotic fish tanks and at no point ever actually had any sexual relations with any fish. Mr. Murphy refuses to allow Mr. West to be cast in any role unless he is wearing spandex. Tom has forced Bobby the Brain Heenan to prove he is a high school graduate before allowing him back on set. Tom has repeatedly berated and ridiculed both Jane Belushi and Christina Farley for their recent gender transitions. Tom has been known to denigrate these two women using the T word with Miss Belushi and refusing to allow Miss Farley to be announced as Christina. When Fred Willard broached the idea of transitioning himself, Mr. Murphy chased him around with a pair of scissors, claiming that he himself would perform the surgery. Finally, he refuses to give a fuck about Buck, Henry, just outright refuses to acknowledge him. So we are asking that somebody, anybody, employ this monster so that we, the cast and crew of Saturday Night Live, can return to resting in peace. Regards, Michael O'Donohue.